There's not one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. What's up and welcome into episode number 31 of the Program Guys podcast. My name is Mason Prince, joined with you as always by Mark Hall, Matt Gann, Patrick Hertzberger, no Ryan Tyson tonight. Today is Wednesday, August 10th. Be sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. You can find us there, Program Guys Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Program Guys with a Z, on Instagram, Program Guys with a Z, on Facebook, Program Guys Podcast. Find us however you get your podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, however you find us. Also, I was told by our producer, Trevor, to read this off to the people. I'm saying this to you directly. That's what he says. He says, I have to say this to you directly. Folks, 75% of you, who are watching this on YouTube right now are not currently subscribed to the channel. We need your help. We are trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We are at 560 right now. We need your help. If you are watching this video right now, all it takes, go right down here, click the subscribe button. That's all you got to do. I don't even need you to click alerts. I just need you to subscribe. That's all I need. So and if we- not, And if not, Trevor's going to keep calling you out. That's right. right. He is coming for blood, and uh, you better hit subscribe to avoid it. That's right. I mean that that's a lot. Seventy five percent. And if you like our content, it helps us out. It helps us keep producing this content. So please like and subscribe on this video. Appreciate it, boys. How are we doing? How are we doing, guys? It's a long two days of this week. Yeah, so far. I know it's been a tough week. It My uh, God. it has. Let's let's go ahead and get get into it. We had our emergency podcast uh, drop on Tuesday. With Great Josh Callaway. Guys. Once again, big thank you to Josh Callaway for jumping in right there. Um, Josh didn't really give us any new information, and that's kind of okay. We weren't expecting him to break any news on the podcast by any means. But what we've kind of learned over the past 24 hours about the Kale Gundy saga is that he said it multiple times, the mm-hmm. racial slur. Uh, I th- who who uh, Rufus Alexander came out today and basically didn't walk back his support of Gundy, but reiterated that, like, he supports Gundy, but, like, he's on Brent Venable's side. And it's weird. Does anyone else get a weird feeling that, like, we're taking sides here? Yeah. Whereas Gundy is the one who, like, walked away. I don't feel like there's a side to take. I feel like Gundy took the side of the program, and he should be commended for understanding that he needed to walk away. I feel like Brent's statement Monday was nipping the sides thing in the bud a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's because it did seem like there was some very public outcry from former players and alumni about, hey, we love Kale. The parents of players coming out and saying, hey, we love Kale. Our kid is at OU because of Kale Gundy. And Monday afternoon rolls around and Brent just put stop to it. You know, the door's closed. And yep. uh, I'm not sure there's any value in trying to have sides at that point because no. it's just not going to make a difference. I tend to think this got over the coaching staff's head in the first place anyway. And so there is no difference to be made. But um, at the same time, accountability is not a bad thing. So it's more or less what Brent has been saying since day one. And it just it just sucks as Kale Gundy, man. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I think Bob Stoops had some great insight on on the ref today and his thoughts gave some excellent thoughts about how there is no good position to take here. We shouldn't be no. taking positions. What we need to do is acknowledge that Kale Gundy's done more than anyone for the program and um, just move forward and trust the program. You can yeah. you can love the man while not loving the actions. The yeah. people people are gonna try to condemn Kale Gundy and treat him as like a human scumbag when he's not he's not he's a guy who is devoted to the program who made a terrible decision a very bad decision but he's not a terrible person so we need to not separate those two like he or we need to separate those two is what i should say kale gundy can be the guy who he was for 30 years at oklahoma and also a guy who made a stupid mistake and had to pay for it 
Well, like Josh Callaway said the other day, he's been in the program for 20 plus years. I mean, gave his dedication. I'm sure he had other opportunities possibly to go other well, uh, you know, elsewhere, other programs. And he decided to stay right at OU. And I think there's a reason you see all of the outcry from former players, how much he is respected in the OU community for what he does, not only just from a leadership standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint, from just being a man and being that guy that these players looked up to. So it's definitely a very sad situation. I'm very respectful of him just coming out and going ahead and resigning and not making it such a sticky situation because it's it's hard to get in front of it what type of punishment would be other than you know, him leaving the program. So I'm glad BV got in front of it, uh, kind of nipped that in the bud, like Mark said. And obviously it's sad that we're missing a, a great guy from the program because of that. But I think it and is that, what it is at this point. Matt made a good point. It, this is my whole problem with it is people who are upset about Kale leaving or having to resign or whatever went down. And they're like, he shouldn't have, have had to resign for this. It's a no-win situation no matter what happens. So he stays, and people are going to be mad that a guy who said the word multiple times is still on your staff. That's going to hurt recruiting. That's going to hurt a whole lot of different things down the line. How do you look at parents on the recruiting trail and explain the context of what happened every time? You you can't. It's going to be impossible to do. It's a lose-lose situation either way. He he either stays on or he's off, and people are mad like they are right now. So go ahead, Mark. I just think the more productive conversation now is moving forward. Like, is LaDamian Washington the receivers coach? Mm-hmm. Or are they trying to hire someone right now for this season? Dude, we're right. three or, weeks out. I know. I don't think yeah, they I don't do. I think, I think it's Washington for this season, and it's under an interim tag, and they see how he does. More – pressing i think because i think they can figure out the receiver position yeah. is recruiting kale gundy mm-hmm. is the receivers coach and is a key point of contact has been a key point of contact for all of these guys throughout their offensive recruitment the offensive guys on recruitment someone's got i mean demarco murray was on the phone all day yesterday had to be yeah. right had sure. to be because Jeff Levy too. I guarantee yeah. you Jeff was calling yeah. both of them. Joe John's on the phone. Bill Beatonball's on the phone. Like yeah. everyone has to be doing damage control on that because it's it's not just what's happening on campus. There's a forward looking aspect to the football program that I think is is you know at issue here too. Yeah. Yeah. Well uh let's we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully we hear from Brent Venable soon. I'm sure we will. I'm sure he'll have a press conference at some if point this week. Have a press he he has yeah, to. I'm surprised he's not he today or tomorrow. Press conference yet. Yeah, he's he needs to, and I think he will. He was already scheduled to have one at some point this week. I don't know. He'll probably just have one, so I don't know when that'll be. But speaking of practice, we talked. We we'll move on to some practice talk now. Full padded practice begins later on this week. I think it begins on Friday. And by full pads, I mean like full on. They're they're hidden. They're not shells anymore. Like full on, they're gonna be full contact. Besides, you know the quarterbacks. But anybody find anything interesting from what Josh had to say yesterday about about practice? Um, I I thought it would. I thought he had a couple little little tidbit notes or or anything that that you guys have read about the first week or so of practice. He keeps – he's so confident in Bentavious Thompson. I know. Yeah. And uh, I I love it. Me too. But it's it's very funny because I feel like I'm looking over at Tawi Walker and I'm thinking <laughs> kind of the same things. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. – yeah. Because we saw Tawi in the spring. Right. And I just I, – I thought he caught the ball well and he moved really fluidly and he looked natural on the field with those athletes. And it'll be – fun to see if he can find a role on the offense there's going to be a lot of a lot of touches to go around i think we're going to have more backs than just eric gray and marcus major in the mix and maybe he can get in there i like to hear you know i've heard from multiple sources that there was a ton of intensity yesterday so it doesn't seem like a guy like kale gundy gundy resigned this week right it seemed like they Mm -hmm. went into practice they started working hard and they were all on the same page and they're all one program together right um and that that was good to hear because you know, it could be really tough for those guys to get out there after such bad news um, and, and put their 
best out there and and it seems like they went out there and they had an intense practice so that's good to see yeah there was a video that i saw on social media of Ladamian washington working with the receivers and i mean that guy's mm. intense man he's yeah and i know one you know 20 second snippet doesn't a practice make but if he's going through individual drills like that i'm sure he's just as intense as anybody else out there getting on those receivers so i think i think they're gonna ride with Ladamian. I, you can, so. they're, they're three, they're three weeks out. If you hire somebody, you're hiring essentially a nobody who just doesn't have a job right now, or you're pulling someone away from another program who is getting ready to play their games in three weeks. So it's, I just don't, I don't see it. I think it's they hard. I think the mm-hmm. only thing you can do is ride with, with LaDamian. Don't you think Matt? Yeah, I think it's next 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 man up mentality. Whether it's a player or coach, whatever mm-hmm. it is, you got to be able to. You know, these things unfortunately do happen. Whatever the circumstances are, and you got to be able to fill that position at whatever time is needed. And uh, again, we saw some of the, the snippets from him getting in there, just going practice like usual. So now it's his job to come in there and try to replace again one of uh, a great coach that's been around the program for such a long time so it's you know not something easy to do but he's got to step in there and lead those guys uh because the wide receiver core is going to be very important this year i mean we got some big guys big names marvin mims and theo weiss and then a lot of kind of unproven guys in that room so he's gonna have to be able to step in and and uh, figure it out with three weeks out so this whole podcast kind of came about for our listeners is we wanted to not create a podcast that's going to be you know, us breaking news and, and all that stuff. We're OU fans. All of us graduated from OU. We are OU fans. So we're going to tell you what the fans perspective, like we're not going to be unbiased journalists. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to give you knee jerk reactions because that's who we are. But if you're listening to this podcast right now and you think the entire Oklahoma program is on fire, you're wrong because listen at the beginning of this podcast in the intro of this show, there's always a soundbite from Bob Stoops telling us that nobody's bigger than the program. And Kale Gundy, for as much as he's done, is not bigger than this program. And that's what I want to end the Kale Gundy thing on. We're going to be okay. Everybody take a breath. We're three weeks out. It sucks, but we're going to be okay. We're going to lose some recruits. You need to accept that. Maybe. I mean, yeah, maybe. So maybe that, that's uh, just where we're at. Go ahead, Mark. Getting getting back to the spring ball that we had started talking about. Oh, yeah. uh, one other guy that I'm interested in seeing is freshman Alton Tarber. He is 330 pounds, and mm. I just want to see what that looks like. Yeah. And, yeah. and can he get on the field at all? You imagine we're going to be platooning the defensive line a little bit, getting guys rest when we can. Is he someone who can just be a Big ass nose tackle and stuff some guys. I I I just like seeing big guys. Dude, I I watched the uh, 2001 national championship against Florida State today, just randomly. Uh, and seeing as that one does. T- see, yeah, I know. I'm down bad, guys. <laughs> I'm down bad. Uh, <laughs> I need some football. <laughs> but seeing that defense dominate. Just made me so excited. Yeah. And I'm so excited to see what this defense looks like. I'm more excited to like see the depth chart when we get that first depth chart. I think it's like it comes out like a week and a half before the game or like two weeks. So I think we have some time, but I'm just excited to see the size of some of these guys because you watch that team when they last won a national title, Rocky Kalmus in the middle as a middle linebacker was a unit. You look at Corey Callens, who was a defensive end there, a unit. Roy Williams running back there. They listed him as a linebacker in the national championship. He was a strong safety, but he was so massive and important that they listed him as a linebacker. Like that's what we're going to get back to. And I think that's what I'm most looking forward to. So I can't wait to see that. Sorry. Went down yeah, a rabbit hole today. No, it's all good. I think Todd Bates said the past couple of weeks, you know, they don't want five big guys, just five big guys, right? They want eight, seven, eight yeah. you know, big guys to interchange all the time. And we're not losing a step because we're playing so fast. And I think that's what they're headed to. So Mark, yeah, hopefully we see them. Yeah. I not, also, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. If you had something else there. I, I was just going to take a shot at Alex Grinch. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That was good. Was just, yeah. There's yeah. always space here for that. Yeah. I know. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I'm looking at the roster and we've heard a lot about Tyler Guyton this spring. So wondering if he keeps it together 
as we put the pads on. Uh, so, you know, Wanya Morris, he has not looked like the guy he was supposed to be coming in, but apparently mm-hmm. he's transformed his body and maybe he makes an impact on the line. Go yeah. Vols, right, Pat? Absolutely. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of cool storylines. Jalen Redmond moving to the three tech. I'm so Love that's it. Oh Love it. my God. So he's going to eat people alive. <laughs> I know. It's going to be so great. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. I'm just real excited. It's going to be lit. Let's, uh, a little uh, announcement that came out today. Marvin Mims, Theo Wee's name to the Campbell Award watch list. Uh, I feel like that that deserves a mention. We don't have to dive too deep into that. But, I mean, there there's a million guys on that watch list. You can go look it up and find it. But Theo Wee's and Marvin Mims on that list. So, can, congrats to them. Go ahead, Mark. I just thought that I didn't know the Campbell Award was. What is that one? It's like the... It's like one of those like best overall it's like players. Texas from Texas, right? Isn't that what that is? I actually think it is because it's named. Oh, after oh the Earl Maxwell Earl is the Campbell. best overall in Campbell. Yep. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Campbell Award football. Do, do, do. Oh no, hold on, wrong. It is the best combination of academics, community service, and on-field performance. Okay. So that's okay. A cooler deal. Yeah. Not, a, like not a bad award to be up for. Not no. a bad. Early Kohler won it last year. Oh, okay. Good name. All right. So uh, let's let's get into some into some recruiting real quick. Uh, mm. Jordan Renault uh, sets his commitment date for September nineteenth. If you don't know who he is, you probably should. Mm-hmm. He's six four, two fifty. He's a four star edge rusher out of Tyler, Texas. He's between Oklahoma and Alabama. So OU is going to do everything they can. Todd Bates, Miguel Chavis are going to be cooking, trying to get this guy September nineteenth. That's it's a weird date, I feel like, because it's like in the middle. The season has already started. Um, but, you know, who's that other recruit who's recruiting at halftime of his football game or something in August? Uh, is that Macari? Is it Macari Vickers? Yeah, it might be. So, so I, mean, I just yeah, don't like but, I just don't like it. But OK, come to yeah, OU. I love you. <laughs> yeah. I Yeah. So he's he's an impressive specimen. And a lot of people have a lot of good things to say about that guy. So that's another guy, Todd Bates, Miguel Chavis, just continuing to grind. He was, grind. At, the, he was at the party at the palace and mm-hmm. was crystal balled by multiple sources uh, that night and the weekend after. So hopefully that comes to fruition. I feel like Nick Saban's not out of it until he decides he's out of it, but agreed. Yeah. Fingers I, I, crossed. I think, on, I think I saw on three had Jordan mm-hmm. going to Bama, but like a high chance of going to Bama. I hope they're wrong there. Um, And then, yeah, just overall, this guy was a track star as well. He's played four years of varsity. That's not an easy thing to do in Florida and Texas. I think he started out in Florida and moved to Texas or something like that. Hmm. Um, So really excited to to see if he can come to OU. That'd be great. Yeah. I don't, I don't know who the leader in the clubhouse is. I'm, you know, I'll, we'll have to check the recruiting experts or anything like that. Um, all right, let, that's that's kind of it for the, the recruiting world. So we'll move on. Uh, coaches poll, USA Today coaches poll came out this week. Who's number one, guys? Uh, I don't know. It's Alabama. I, I know. I'm, I'm just, just, I'm just I know. I'm just kidding. So Alabama's number one, Ohio State number two, Georgia three, Clemson four, Notre Dame five, Michigan six, A&M seven, Utah eight, OU coming in at nine, and two Big 12 teams after that, Baylor and Oklahoma State at 10 and 11, Oregon 12, USC down at 15. You got Texas at 18. Um, I don't know. I I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a coach's poll. So, like, it's it's there. I'm, I, you, I'm to the point now where I'm not going to really care about OU's preseason ranking unless some, some idiot puts them outside the top 25. Like, if, as long as they're a top 25 team going in, I can accept that wherever you want to put them, whatever, that's fine. But if, if somebody drops them outside the top 25, that's when I'll probably lose my mind. But at this point I can't, I, I think can't it'd be really silly. like get too worked up. Yeah. I think it'd be silly if we're not in the top 10, honestly. Um, my it's biggest fair. call out here is number four through nine, like Clemson at four, all the way to nine to us really interchangeable. I think that four spot is really up for grabs. Typically is always up for grabs, but this year in particular, with Clemson being hyped up and not like for some odd reason, Texas A&M being hyped up because they're Texas A&M, but they don't have a quarterback announcement yet. So that's odd. 
Oklahoma, obviously we have the potential to win every single game. Like I think we will. Utah Utes are really good this year. So I think that four spots up for grab and four through nine is pretty interchangeable. Also, Texas, uh, Alabama, 54 first place votes. Ohio State, five first place votes. Georgia, six. Texas with one. Texas is down <laughs> yeah. there at 18. They're the only other team that got a first place vote. Who's so voting silly. for them, man? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what they are you need to doing? Quit their job. They just need to quit their job right Saban now. Saban is voting. For you them. think Saban? I mean, that'd be funny. That'd be funny. Oh my god! He just he's just sitting on his couch on Twitter, laughing about all the posts about this number one or this yeah. one pick. Someone gasses him up, and he's just sitting there laughing, scheming. <laughs> Matt, he's any- double screening because Alabama didn't put a homework clause in his contract. Matt, anything on this surprise you? Not really surprising. I, I still don't get the hype around Clemson. I get that Dabo Sweeney is a great know. recruiter, a great coach, but they've just lost so much, and they still haven't figured out quarterback situation. Notre Dame's a little bit interesting, especially with first-time head coach coming in as well, see how he can just jump in and see. Uh, obviously, they rallied around him, so that will be interesting. You know, Michigan was in the playoff last year. They had a good run, but that was like their first good run and whoever yeah. knows how long, right? The first time they beat Ohio State and – years yeah. right with john yeah, harbaugh yes. finally getting a win so i think you know with patrick's assessment four through nine pretty interchangeable i'm actually kind of curious why they put three big 12 teams oklahoma baylor oklahoma state i wonder if they just truly don't know who they think, think they know come out yeah. on top if they're just almost nine through 11 for the big 12 just interchangeable as well yeah. texas being inside the the top 20 is a joke uh, as usual <laughs> but of course, a lot of SEC teams and, you know, Cincinnati sneaking in there as well, being a top four team, but they also lost quite a bit. So a uh, very interesting list. I felt like the poll last week, maybe uh, somewhat yeah. more accurate, but I agree. it's a poll. It's a preseason poll. I, I mean, it is what it is at this point. I am, I am intrigued to see NC State at 13 because I know literally nothing about them. Yeah. So <laughs> just seeing them at 13 is kind of like, oh, wow, there's an, there's an ACC team that people think is worth a damn other than Clemson. It's kind of kind of wild to see. Pittsburgh's in there as well, right? Top twenty. Yeah, Pittsburgh's there as well. Pittsburgh's yeah, 16. sixteen. Yeah, and after Miami losing, is seventeen. After losing, after losing Pickett, Pickett and Davis Addison Bevel and Jordan Addison. Yeah. Well, they got Slovis know. from USC. I think, which is a, a I don't know. He's I guess he's okay, but that's the only thing I can think of for Pitt. Yeah. The uh, if you look at the actual points, which is how they rank the, the yeah, yeah. teams. There is about a 150 point difference between Notre Dame and Utah, a hundred or so point difference between Utah and Oklahoma, and then like 130 between us and Baylor. And then there's nothing between Baylor and Oklahoma State. So there are some small little tiers sort of in the way that votes were distributed, and they kind of make sense to me. Like we are a little bit better than those other two Big 12 schools. And Whenever these coaches were blindly filling this out because it doesn't matter at all, they said that. Yeah. I'm with you. So. All right. So that's uh, that's the rankings. Let us know <laughs> on Twitter, on YouTube. Comment on the video below. Do you think OU is too high, too low? Do you think anybody else is too high, too low? Maybe Texas. Um, <laughs> let, us, uh, let us know in the comment section. Tweet at, at us, program guys, with <clears> – <throat> All right, guys, I lied to you last week. I messed up big time. Mm. We are not done with Undeniables. <laughs> we have one more week. We have one more week, I think, right? This is it. Yep. Okay, this is it. This is our final Undeniable segment. I said it last week, but this is it. It's it's wide receivers. So you're picking your Undeniable, greatest wide receiver in college football history. Mark, do you want to get us started? Because me and Mark have the same guy, and Mark's a Mark's a Georgia Tech guy, sort of. So I want to give him credit to start. Dad I also have that guy. To, yeah, Dad wins a Tech. Patrick, do you well, want to start us off, and then I'll go from there? Thanks, Whatever Jason. you want. Sure. I mean, I feel like you get really passionate about these, Mark. I feel like you well, should be I'll let you here. go because I I don't want to do anything that you say, right? And we'll just go from there. Well, right? I'll just I'll, simply I'll read the out. accolades of this incredible player. Do it. Do we, should we announce his name? Did we? Did you? Yeah, yeah. Say all yeah. right, Calvin Johnson. Great, awesome. Mm. First team freshman All American in two thousand four, All American in two thousand five and two thousand six. First team ACC All American all three years he was in college: two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand six. ACC Rookie of the Year, ACC Player of the Year, four time ACC Rookie of the Week. Um, got the. I'm really bad at pronouncing this this award. The 
Bolenikov. And there, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, it's the, the Bolenikov. The Blindikoff, the Blindikoff Award, the uh, Paul War- Warfield Trophy, uh, tenth place in Heisman voting. Voting that's not very good, but uh, we're going to ignore. I said that, and then uh, yeah, he's been selected <laughs> for the uh, induction of the College Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, you. So when I think of who's Patrick, the most dominant, what? don't just read off Wikipedia. I mean, I didn't. I looked, read off his accolades. He did. You read out of his accolades. I'm looking at the page and it's the order. Mason. So you're judging me for the same thing you're currently doing? I mean, I'm looking at it. I was, I was looking at it too. I just happened to write it down. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. So hey, when works. I think of when I think of Calvin Johnson, I I think of the undeniable because of all those stats that Patrick just said, but he only played three years, but he started as a freshman, played three years, got done with his junior year, and then left for the NFL draft. He was a dominant force you think of him in the nfl and you're like oh yeah that's megatron but in college he was the precursor to that and if you can believe it he was even more impressive because he was making grown division one football players look like high school sophomores because of how big of a physical presence he was and just how dominant he was when the ball was in the air if the ball was in the air in calvin johnson's vicinity he was going to come down with it and I just, I, there's so many like highlights, Calvin Johnson. We use this phrase too much and and we use a lot of cliches, but he is a human highlight reel. He is the definition of one and not just his NFL. Look up his college highlights and you will watch that guy for a 10 minute highlight clip. And you will be like, oh yeah, there's no way anyone in college football history is better than that guy. Totally agree. Shout out Rich Hall. Shout out. Shout out Rich Hall. Calvin Johnson, 6'5, 235. The man clocked in at 435 when he ran hmm. his 40 yard dash. Unbelievable. Ran an ele- or jumped an 11 foot standing broad jump and has a vertical leap of 43 inches. He is unlike any athlete that we've ever seen at the position. The the only thing close is like if you took Randy Moss and mixed him with my undeniable tight end, Kellen Winslow II, and turned them into one monster that could jump over every human being that he wasn't already running all the way past. He's one of two players, 6'5 or taller, regardless of position, to run a 40 under 4'4". Four four. The, the dude doesn't make sense physically. And it's why, even though he went to a school like Georgia Tech, who I remember the quarterback, his name was Reggie Ball. He could not play. Chan Gailey could not coach an offense. It was tough times. Somehow they got Calvin to stay home and play for him. And I, I mean, who else from Georgia Tech is going with a top five pick? Who else is going from that high? Obviously, the team didn't have the success, but Calvin did. He beat everyone he went against. He's taller, bigger, stronger, faster, better. And that's why Matt Gann, for the last time, he is our undeniable best wide receiver of all time. Give it to me, Matt. Why are we wrong? Tell me right Yeah, now. I was just going to say, I, I forgot. Are we doing like an NFL combine, just like of his physical attributes, or are we actually talking about what he actually did in, in college? I'm confused oh. about what the undeniable actually means. Do you want Mason, me to repeat does he Patrick? Make, well, just Mason, does he meet the well, four criteria that you know we have to get back to? Mason. He doesn't, Mason, but we'll he doesn't. That's, oh, doesn't. man, that's that's hard, man. That's hard because my guy, decided. my guy, hey, Mark, hey, Mark, listen, I know you've had two bad weeks in a row. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I get it. You're frustrated. <laughs> Let me get to the most undeniable Michigan's wide receiver, Desmond Howard, one of four only players playing wide receiver to, to win the Heisman Trophy. That is undeniable, right? The most prestigious college award for best player not even best wide receiver best player in the nation oh wow that year he caught 62 balls for 985 yards 19 touchdowns he also added a couple rushing scores 180 yards on the ground and also returned kick and punt returns 
for the Michigan Wolverines. He tied and broke five different record NCAA records at that time, and he holds over 10 Wolverine records currently to date. Now, listening, he also, other than just winning the Heisman that year, also won the Max Campbell and the Walter Camp as well. Again, accolades are there, longevity, the just the pure sense of being an undeniable player. Hey, I get it. Calvin Johnson, the physical attributes are there. I just didn't hear a great argument for what he actually did at Georgia Tech other than just being a freak athlete. Patrick Patrick Gredoff all his athletes. He said everything. Just don't yeah. don't listen to Patrick just, I just all most of the time I just I, also, I mean you just you just discredited him by reading off Wikipedia. Well, I think also, that just automatically discredits still the stats. Patrick. It's still what happened. How do we oh, you believe Wikipedia all of a sudden? Sorry, Is that I'll, where you get your stats? I'll go to ESPN media, next time. No, Patrick you did great. Excited, Matt. It's okay. just <laughs> Hey, listen. Matt, I get Matt, it. You, you guys your argument you started your argument yeah. with like the Heisman Trophy argument, and if yeah. a Heisman Trophy means that like you're better than everybody, how the hell is Chris Winky one of the best college football quarterbacks of all time? He won no, a Heisman, but he also played quarterback. This so leads it's a lot to easier for a quarterback to win the Heisman versus a wide receiver, or like we talked about when Sue was fourth in Heisman voting. It's just not happening for that type of position outside the quarterback. This, I do want to give – go ahead, Mark. Let's just hear it, man. What's it up, just man? What's leads to a fun little counter. The year that Calvin Johnson won the Bolitnikoff Award but did not obviously win the Heisman, Troy Smith won the Heisman. He was a quarterback for the number one Ohio State Buckeyes and took them to the national championship, which makes sense. The year that Desmond Howard won the Heisman, do you know who came in second and third that year, Matt? who the other two best players in college football were. Go ahead and tell me. Yeah, tell us. Casey Weldon. Never heard of him. Me neither. Quarterback for Florida cars. State. Or third place, Ty Detmer, quarterback at BYU. Ty Detmer, man. Uh, so, uh, you. yeah, your guy's better than those two. Great. Calvin Johnson's going to outrun and outjump your guy and catch the ball. That's right. I, I yeah, actually I just, think – the best is Jerry Rice. I just didn't want to pick him because <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I don't think the competition at Mississippi Valley State was <laughs> was good enough. But it, had he have gone to a Power Five school, it was definitely going to be Jerry Rice. Okay, duly noted, Patrick. Well, thanks. Also Pat. wanting to pick Randy Moss, but I didn't for obvious reasons. But the what, are the obvious reasons? Reasons? what are the obvious reasons? Oh, Pat's have you guys seen his Wikipedia? <laughs> like, you should check it out. Pat <laughs> is <was> telling us. <laughs> well, hey, Wikipedia. Listen, we can argue it all day. Whatever it is, you all three pick the same guy. Can't always yeah. have your own opinion. But what I will <laughs> do is a little pop Packed quiz. Pop, pop quiz. Pop quiz alert. Pop quiz time. Oh, here and we go. Mark, put your put your put your internet, your Wikipedia away. You too, Pat. <laughs> all right. I said, just well, looking at Randy four, Moss's page. Four wide receivers have won the Heisman. Who are the other three? If you could just name one. I, there's one that's pretty obvious because it was recent, but does anyone know the last two before Desmond Howard that won? Okay, so Desmond Howard and Devontae Smith mm-hmm. and uh, Keyshawn didn't win it, did he? Mm-mm. No. It's good. It's good. Uh, good pick, though, or good uh, answer, but no. Thanks. No, I have no idea. I have no idea. Tim Brown, Notre Dame uh, in 87, and Johnny Ra- Rogers from Nebraska in 72. Only four Eisman wide receivers ever. Fun okay. fact of the day. All right, fun fact of the day. Let us know if we were right or wrong. Who is your undeniable greatest wide receiver in college football history? Is it who we picked? It was the right answer in Calvin Johnson, or is it Desmond Howard or someone else? Maybe let us know at tweet at us program guys with a Z comment on our YouTube video below and uh, let us know what you think. All right, boys, let's move on to some NFL news. Kareem hunt wants the hell out of Cleveland. Shocker. He asked for a trade. He's not the only one who asked for a trade as well. Roquan Smith from the bears asking for a trade as well. We'll just kind of lump them in together and, break it down that way. I'm not surprised that Kareem Hunt wants out. The dude wants a long-term contract and the Browns have no money to give him one. So he's trying to get out of it. And no incentive 
because he's a backup running back. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, he's a, it, he's only there on the contract he's on because he, what, like kicked a woman. Yeah. Isn't that what he did? Yeah. I mean, so he wants to go get paid and he's going to after this contract, but they have no reason to trade him. He is a high value player on a low value contract. You don't trade those guys. Yeah. Yep. I know. I mean, he's like, and he's and he's holding in. He's like still at camp. So yeah. like he has no leverage. I don't know who his agent is, but he's <laughs> fired. Cause yeah. like, why why are you still at camp if you want to trade? And you're just like, but I'm still gonna show up. Because like, you're the backup yeah. running back. That's you'll the, just the, lose your spot. And like could have started doing this in the summer. I know. Well, yeah. I'm sure they have been talking extensions yeah. and yeah, it's just sure. not where he wants it. But yeah. like Roquan Smith, the the Bears. I'm way more surprised by that. The Bears are surprised. lost. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I was just gonna say you make good points about Kareem Hunt, right? His contract's up next year. You can see what him and Nick Chubb have done for the Browns, especially in that run-heavy offense. I mean, he is a valuable asset to a lot of teams. Just if people want to pay that kind of money for obviously what he brings, especially with all this PR and all that as well. But Roquan Smith, I mean, the Bears. What is up? They, it's Roquan Smith and it's Justin Fields. That, those are their two best players, and you got to pay one of them. Obviously, Justin Fields is on his rookie contract, but Roquan Smith is a top 10 inside linebacker, if not top five, in, in my opinion, just based on what he does all around. But they don't have anybody. Why don't you pay the man? I mean, I can't believe And They're not even talking to him. I saw the report that they're not even willing to negotiate or willing to talk to he him. Wants, so. That's the crazy thing. He wants to be there. Yeah. Like, he, he wants to be in Chicago. What person in their right mind would want to be in Chicago? They're a dumpster fire right now. And he's actively choosing. He's a top 10 player at his position. And he's choosing to be with your franchise and you won't even pay. It's it's wild to me. I don't know what the Bears are doing. They're yeah, they're insane. It, it's insane. I think to clarify, top five might be a little too pushing. I think for I a top rising, 10. yeah, rising young 10. player for his capability for what he's going to do for I mean, he's I wouldn't say the next Brian Urlacher. That that might be a little bit too much, but he's the next best thing inside linebacker, especially with his age. And I'm really surprised the Bears aren't going to even willing to talk to him. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm very surprised by it. I don't see why you draft a guy like that only to uh, not want to re-sign him, except that inside backers are the running backs of the defense. Unless you have a just super cerebral Luke Keekley type that never comes off the field and truly elevates the entire defense, then eh, you can probably find a guy who does 75% of what Roquan Smith does for a much lower cost. While I don't think that's the right move, I don't think it sends the right message to your team and Roquan Smith is someone you should be building around. There is a value proposition that, I think has to be teased out a little bit more than we're doing right now. Like, like Matt's team drafted a linebacker and signed Devondre Campbell to a big deal. And uh, that's sort of taking the opposite approach, right? Where you're saying these two linebackers are never going to have to leave the field and we're going to have high value play there all the time because we're investing in it. The bears are saying, we don't want to invest in that. We think we can get it elsewhere. Just, yeah. just, you know, it's interesting. It's different. Yeah, I'm with you. Pat, they're one of your five teams. How you feel? About yeah, I'm sad about, this news. <laughs> sad about the Smith news. Sad about it? Yeah. Uh, he's from uh, when I worked in Georgia, actually. I uh, covered Mason, the high baby. school that Roquan Smith went to, it's Macon County. Uh, very small, very small town. Um, so Roquan Smith, We're, he's a hero down there. Y'all overlapped there for a little bit, right? Uh, for math. like a, I covered him at Georgia, uh, okay. so I covered him. I covered him basically his like his his first two years at Georgia. I want to say like mm-hmm. his first two years. Um, so yeah, he he was solid. He was very very good. All right, uh, other NFL news, some Oklahoma news as well. Ian Rappaport reports that the Panthers' starting quarterback job is quote Baker Mayfield's to lose, and Credit 
Mark said it a couple weeks ago. Like, yeah. If you, if you don't think that he's the guy in Carolina, I don't know what you're doing. Like, there's no way that Sam Darnold can even compete with Baker. And I'm not saying Baker Mayfield's like a godsend and he's the best quarterback in the league, but we all know what Sam Darnold is, and he ain't on the same level that, that Baker is. And you don't bring in Baker unless you want to replace Sam Darnold. Right. There's yes. no reason. And the way Baker has the tendency to just come in and grab a situation by the balls, I think that he's done that there. And Sam Darnold's like a freaking sidekick, man. He's know, just man. he's he's very beatable, it seems. And Baker is someone who's gonna beat. I'm curious what the whole Matt Corral situation is going to end up being. Obviously, he's not going to play like right now, but they did draft the guy. So at what point do you prepare Corral to take the eventual job? Or are you just playing wait and see with Baker to see what he does? I, I don't I don't really know. I'm curious. I'm just it, that's not a thing that's a decision that's going to happen this year, but yeah. maybe two years down the line, it's going to be kind of an interesting storyline. Yeah. Baker's on the last year of his deal. So it is a decision that kind of has to happen within the next yeah. year, right? Mm. I I think it'll be interesting to see if Baker and the Panthers come to an agreement on something that's not this kind of market setting deal that all these quarterbacks want. Yeah. If they can mm. come somewhere that's like $25 million a year and still have cap space elsewhere. Matt Corral's a fine backup for the length of that contract. I don't think you I don't think you forego a Baker extension if he plays well because you have Matt Corral. Yeah. Matt, Pat, Matt what do you think? You're quiet. No, I was just gonna say I'm happy for him. I think he's got Christian McCaffrey, he's got DJ Moore, he's got the infamous Robbie Anderson, who's a big Sam Darnold guy, but he's just going to have to accept that Baker's going to be the starting guy, and I'm glad he gets a fresh start, and I mean, they play, he does play in the worst division of football, no offense Mark, the, the Falcons, Saints, and uh, obviously Tampa, Tampa Bay is just going to run that division <laughs> right all over, but it's a, I'm excited to see him in a, in a new place, hopefully get a fresh start. We'll see where it goes. I I'm, I'm can't wait to uh, see him sling it out there, some of those guys. Go Falcons. Yeah, no surprise here for me. I think they're going to trade Sam Darnold at ASAP. Where? Um, man, I, yeah. I, Forever. I think they gave up for him. so much for him. I, 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 I mean, I, I do think that Patrick's onto something where if Baker just wins the job, why do you keep Sam Darnold in the right. building? You're right. There's there's no reason to. I mean, there's value want- to keep a good second secondary quarterback. Matt Corral, like that. you just drafted him. Yeah, I think I think you just ride with Matt. At least, at least Sam Darnold's up. proven though. PJ Walker's also there. Yeah, from PJ, the XFL. PJ XFL great. and the hold Panthers on, hold on, last hold on, year. Hold on. What is Matt? What is Sam Darnold proven? He's proven I mean, he's that one... he's that he's bad. <laughs> he's proven. Yeah, that he's but not when good. I think about the backup quarterback market, I'm not saying he's up there at being the best. But I'd really have a guy who has played NFL games, has had experience, and he obviously played in the offense last year. So I think I give a little bit of credit. I'm not trying to say he's the best okay. backup quarterback, but there is value. I mean, Baker was hurt all last year with his shoulder. Um, you know, it takes one hit, and then Sam Darnold's all the way back in. Okay, that the only thing, the only problem I had with that was the proven part of the argument. And I was like, he hasn't proved that he's worth a, a damn. So why not ride with Matt Corral as your backup? At that yeah. point, you know, because like PJ if Walker. you put them up together, Matt Corral's thrown way less interceptions than, than <laughs> Sam Darnold. Sure. But so also like, never played an NFL game before. So, I mean, you can argue that Sam Darnold hasn't either. He no. <laughs> no. looks like a bomb. Love I love he's, been out, he's been out for mono a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Justin uh, Tucker, kicker news. Patrick, congratulations. Yeah, Justin Tucker. It. Four year, $24 million to your Baltimore Ravens in extension, yes. 17 and a half million guaranteed. Patrick, Pat, take tell it. us about Justin Tucker and he his absolutely deserves it. He absolutely deserves this. When you can pick Justin Tucker eighth in your NFL fantasy draft, you pick him eighth. Okay. <laughs> you do not get that third string running back or whatever. You know what I want to do? Tucker. We're going to, he we're means in the a, eighth round, everyone. We're going to have, a little, yeah. we're going to have a thing that we're going to do later on. 
uh, in the during the football season, and I want Pat to like give us a waiver wire player that you should pick up every week. Oh yeah, Patrick, totally you've that. won fantasy. Yeah, you're, but you're good at fantasy, so I want you here. to do that every week. Yeah. And it's going to be Pat's. You're going to have your hot take, and then you're going to have your <laughs> waiver wire player. Every yeah. week. Wait, I think Larry Fitzgerald's coming back this week. <laughs> <laughs> and Kyler needs him. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt if Larry has another breakout year all of a sudden. All right, we're not doing this. All right. I'm uh, just kidding. I'm just okay. kidding. All right, moving on to some other news in the NBA. The Kevin Durant drama in, yeah. in Brooklyn I love it. is – Dumpster insane. fire. Dumpster is, fire. It's insane. So correct me if I'm wrong. The news today is that Kevin Durant either wants a trade out of Brooklyn or he stays, but they have to fire Steve Nash. And Sean Marks. And Sean the, Marks. The and GM. The GM. It's so funny. GM. It's crazy uh, that he thinks he has that much power, but he is yeah. he is a top five player in the yeah, NBA. Yeah, but he's not but LeBron James. That's Pat. Great point. Yes. That's true. He's not. Great point. But he signed to a four-year deal. <laughs> I think that this is kind of unprecedented. And I do think that KD, I mean, there was a report today that he would be down to skip training camp if this isn't resolved in a way that's satisfactory to him. And I just think now is a very good time to point out that in 2023, whichever pick is better, the Rockets get it from the Nets or themselves. In 2024, they have an unprotected Brooklyn first round pick. In 2025, they have a first round pop swap with the Nets. In 2026, they have their first round pick. And in 2027, they have a swap. And Matt thinks that the OKC Thunder have a better foundation <laughs> moving forward with a bunch of Bucks and Lakers picks from, from or Clippers picks that'll be in the 20s. How did we get from Tell him Katie that. Saga to talking about it's relevant the back to the Thunder? Rockets, who are going to win 15 <laughs> games? This full year. circle, baby. That's how the we Thunder got still have 15 first round draft picks. We're talking get, about Kevin Durant out of here. No, man, now we're talking about Kevin. <laughs> don't right, even so, get me started there. God. So if you're, I don't even know why does he want out of Brooklyn? I don't even know the reason why. Is it because of Kyrie? I think it's the hesitancy that they've had towards Kyrie. And I don't get that. Okay. I mean, it's got to be Ben right, Simmons right. too, right? I mean, they traded for him. You see all the Ben Simmons drama. Uh, drama. I think the most recent report was they they te- or they were in the group chat. They texted Ben to come back. I think it was game four of the Celtics. And he just left the group chat. Yep. <laughs> just yeah, bailed. He just bailed, and I, I think that's got to play a part of it. I, I mean, how can that. you give give up assets for a guy that – I mean, if Ben Seven played, him, Kyrie, and KD, I mean, they're a force in the East, but th- that's probably not going to happen at this point. Uh, it, it's the, the whole saga between Kyrie, Ben, just not a not a melting part you want to be part of, and I can see why he wants out. And I guess he's he really doesn't like Stephen Nash, apparently. So. Got him <laughs> hired. Does. And yeah. doesn't doesn't want to play for him. It's yeah. the I, I can't think of any NBA situation where the players misplayed it the way KD has this Brooklyn thing. It, it was going to be his chance to have a team and take yeah. it to the top, and it's been derailed by his own machinations right. as a team builder. Yeah. Yep. He, it's it's wild. Go ahead, Pat. Sorry, I feel like I no no. Go ahead. I just don't understand. He's not a likable person from the outside looking in. And I hate doing this because, like, I don't know Kevin Durant as a person. I'm sure he's a fine dude. But, like, from the outside looking in, at some point, you are the optics that you put out. And the optics that you put out are garbage. And they've been garbage for, like, seven years. (laughs) I just don't understand why he continues to be like this. I've never seen a player so good who chooses to continue to be an asshole. It's, it's shocking to me. I don't get it. I don't get it, but Hey, the Aaron, Nets and- Aaron Rodgers has been on a real media tour. Can we Dude, stop? Sure has. What is your problem, Mark? 
oh, I did ayahuasca and I don't talk to my family. Hey, in other in other every, news, that I know what love is now and no, it's not in my other, family. In other, in other NFL <laughs> news, Matt, congrats <laughs> to you. He's not going to be tested for that drug. They said that it's not illegal. It's not in the NFL policy. That's yeah, correct. So, ayahuasca, yeah. is that what it is? Ayahuasca. Uh, ayahuasca. I, I, I saw like, something. Wasn't there a couple a years ago? Netflix doc that came out about it not that long ago um maybe a year or two ago um it's a documentary series about like alternative medicines that people use throughout the world and that was one of the episodes and it seems crazy that's nuts that's all awesome. you gotta know back to back and mvp that's all you need to know yeah, you lost a jimmy that's G. a Jimmy G doesn't That's even use that touchdown. Oh, Pat, don't even get started with your five, six NFL teams that you root for. Why don't we get me started? Matt, Maybe we'll just, Matt just making the blanket statement, he's yeah. an MVP, that's all you need to know, is that's all you need wild to, to me. He's the best quarterback <laughs> in the league. I love it. That's <laughs> like, okay. Kevin right. Durant is a cupcake. That's like, we, have to end this, we have to end the discussion about Kevin Durant with calling him a cupcake. He is a cupcake. I, I agree with that, Patrick. Mark, right, I, can't anybody... wait to have, I just can't wait to have more battles with Mark throughout the, the season once the season starts. I'm coming for you, Mark. Okay. Don't you just worry. I'm going to remember this. Remember, I know what you say. I'm coming after you, buddy. Oh, okay. It's, a it's just tough because I wish we could see Kevin Durant doing the things that he should be doing on a basketball court instead I know. of all this, all this I foolishness. Agree. I agree. I'm going to talk all this crap on Kevin Durant. And they're going to trade him to the Celtics. And then I'm going to be like, this guy <laughs> rocks. <laughs> yeah, like, this, guy's this, guy, awesome. uh, this guy's pretty sick. I think this guy makes some good points. I'm I'm that kind of fan. So sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Um, all right. Let's move on to our PGP MVPs of the week, right? Is that where we're at now? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's where we're at now. Yep. All right. I'll yep. I'll go ahead and start um because it's fresh. The, I'm good. My PGP MVP of the week is the Tulsa Little League team. Little League regionals are going on right now. The Tulsa, Oklahoma team made it all the way to the regional final before they lost to a team from Texas. Um, but on their way to that final, it's as far as they've gotten in a long time, and they beat the East Texas team for the first time, like, ever. So, Tulsa, what? What am I no. doing? No, then yeah, it's just anything. Mark in the outline. Just he's oh, being okay. silly. He's, he's being, being silly. He's being again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so Tulsa Little League, they lost. They're not moving on to Williamsport. It's it's sad. But the cool thing was in their game today, one of their players got hit in the dome by a fastball and made it to first base. And a really cool sportsmanship moment. That's what the Little League World Series is all about. The pitcher who hit the kid in the face from Tulsa was real torn up about it. The guy made his way to first base and then walked over to the pitcher, kind of gave him a little hug to let him know, Hey man, we're good. Like the, uh, I know what wasn't any malicious intent. Very it's really cool moment. to see 12 Very year old kids moment. who like get it. It's just cool. So Tulsa little league, my PGP MVP of the week. All right. Who's next Patrick. Go ahead. Yeah. I've been, I've been conflicted this week. Because I, my fallback is always a German soccer player who's playing lights out. But I just want to go with LaDamian Washington. Because okay. of that 20-second clip that we saw of him with all that energy, it seems like he's really stepping up. And I want that to be a positive note, and I want us to ride with LaDamian, Tom, uh, Tom, LaDamian Washington. Okay. Um, hey, let's, so, I'm ready to go on record for you with you right now, Patrick. This yeah. is a pro Ladamian Washington podcast. Absolutely. We're yeah. we're willing to stand on that on that stage. Yeah, and I think we should. I, I think he reacted really well, and I hope he continues. And I hope we continue to hear great things. Okay, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, Pat. I know you couldn't pick a German soccer player, so I'll go with a Norwegian soccer player. Sure. I think you'd be uh, happy about this one. Holden, Holden, dun, 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 dun. Forward for Manchester Forward. United made his Wrong. debut. Wrong. Manchester what do you City. Call him? Manchester. Oh, sorry, City. Manchester City. That's, oh, on, that's, that's on me. That's, that's on me. That's tough. That's a tough look. Make sure we edit. Go back. Cut that. Yeah, Yankee or a Met City. <laughs> Made his debut, scoring two goals against West Ham. He clearly looks like the best player on the field. And Man City has been dominant for the last few years. They're only going to continue to dominate with that man up top. He reminds me a little bit of Patrick, just a tall, fast, lanky dude. But 
man, that guy knows how to play soccer. Incredible scoring two goals in his first game. He is my MVP of the week. Patrick, what position did you play? I always meant to ask you. Left back and center back. Okay. I, I, I never knew. Never knew. Yeah. So, okay, good to know. Good to know. All right, Matt or Mark, round us out. I will wrap us up. Many of you know the Atlanta Falcons drafted a unicorn tight end last year. His name is Kyle Pitts, and he is dominating in his second training camp with the Falcons. He is my MVP of the week because I am predicting a very, 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 very productive season for him. Uh, His touchdown over under is four and a half right now. And you should definitely get after that because who Wait, else his touchdowns is are catch four and a half? Four and a half. He only had For one last season. Year. Yeah, I saw, one last I saw year. a video oh, of his a... all of his touchdowns last year was in London against the Jets, man. Yep. Oof, what yep. a touchdown, man. That was great. I think we're just Sick. gonna see a different uh yeah. I mean Julio had one the same to four? issue with Matt. Woof. I don't know. No, I'm I, I'm team Mark. Give me I'm the team over. Mark. Pitts is gonna have a great year. I'd pick him off the way while it's running to by Marcus Mariota. I think there's a reason. They think there's a reason his over under is four, four and a half, four and a half, four and a half. Hey man, I hey. it's fun Two to me. Even Mark, I love it, baby. Four it's, touchdowns. It's fun to games. me that uh, Matt's letting this anti Mark thing get so deep that he's now anti Kyle Pitts. That's right. <laughs> he's, just, he's like, hey, I the best young tight end in, bas- in football. I haven't seen yeah. one touchdown last year. Come on. I know going from Matt yeah, Ryan I mean, to Marcus Mariota. I mean, come on. Pitts could yeah, definitely but like who be... else is he gonna throw to? Yeah, that's the thing. He has no other wide receiver. Drake Pitts London, is definitely man. That's, why, be a top that's five. why you drafted him so high. Drake London coming in. USC. I, I don't All right. this weird smile, man. It's real no, mad. I think it's, it's bothering like, me. No, give me the over. Just funny. It's just give me funny, give me the over on I'll hit that over any day. Also, well, wanted... I did hit that over, so y'all let me know if you want it. Okay, good to know. Uh and with that. Episode 31 is going to be in the books. Be sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. 75% of you who are watching this video right now, that's right, I'm talking to you, Bill. You're sitting on your couch watching this on your phone. I see you, Bill. Subscribe. That's going to freak somebody out, hopefully. So, Are you all going to comment and not subscribe? Yeah, like and subscribe to this video, to our channel. Please help us out trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year we're at 560 as of this episode be sure to give us a rating on spotify and apple podcast that's where you can find us you can also find us on twitter at program guys with a z on instagram program guys with a z facebook program guys podcast anything else before we get out guys oh you start padded practice thursday let's get it bang gotta love it ryan we miss you pat take us out keep pushing baby